Minara is a beautiful cooperative dexterity game from designer Oliver Rickberg and published by the Asmodee studio Lion Rampant Games. Players work together to rebuild an ancient temple from its fallen ruins, drawing cards, placing and replacing pillars and floors, and laughing the whole way through. This game has all of the tense, entertaining aspects of a great game of Jenga, with a little added strategy to keep you coming back for more. The fact that it's cooperative throws a whole new twist onto the dexterity genre. And, as an added bonus, by the end of the game, if you play your cards right, you and your friends will have built a stunning work of art. So, like we do every day here at Great Oaks, we're going to teach you how to play. The first time you open the box, you'll need to put together the camp. This little guy holds the columns you can swap for at the beginning of each of your turns. Just pop out all the pieces and attach them like this. The holes should be on top and the flat edges of the pieces should be on the bottom. These are the temple floors. Mix them up, stack them one on top of the other in one spot, kind of like a big deck of cards, until you've formed this pile, which is called the quarry. Now, draw the top three temple floors and arrange them on the table like so. They shouldn't overlap, and they should each be touching each other at two points like here, here, and here. This forms the temple base. These are the level cards. They tell you how many levels the tower will need to be by the end of the game to win. A level is any temple floor which is stacked on top of pillars. So that means the temple base does not count as a level. This floor would be the first level. This would be the second, and so on. For an easy game, place out three level cards. For medium, you'll place four. And for a challenging game, place out all five. Place these off to the side where everyone can see them. These cards are the construction plan cards. Separate these into the three colors on their backs, red, yellow, and blue, and shuffle each of them separately. Then, take all of these colored columns, toss them in the bag, and mix them up. Then, fill the camp with random columns. Finally, each player will now grab a number of columns from the bag. This number will depend on the number of players in the game and the difficulty you've chosen to play at. For example, in a four-player game with medium difficulty, each player would draw four random columns. Otherwise, just take a look at this chart and have each player draw that many columns. This number is your max column count. This means, at the end of each of your turns, you will always draw columns from the bag until you have this same number of columns. The player who most recently entered the top floor of a building starts. After that, play continues clockwise. On your turn, you'll do these four things in order. First, you may exchange as many columns as you'd like with the camp. You may want to do this if you see a lot of open column bases that don't match the columns you have. Second, you reveal the top card from one of the three decks of construction plan cards. Third, you will carry out the plan printed on that card, if you can. Then finally, 
you draw back up from the bag to your max column number. So let's talk about these cards. There are three stacks of construction cards in ascending difficulty. The blue cards are the easiest, the yellow ones are medium, and the red are the hardest. Take care when drawing these cards. You will most likely end up drawing almost every card in the deck by the end of the game. And trust me, you don't want to be stuck with only the hardest cards left when the tower is at its highest and most vulnerable state. To help illustrate this, we'll go over what types of cards you'll see in the game now. This symbol means place columns. One, two, three, or four, depending on how many you see on the card. This is usually simple enough. Just place that number of columns on any temple floors. Anytime a column is placed, it will need to be placed on a matching base. This means you'll place blue columns on blue spaces, yellow columns on yellow spaces, and so on and so forth. No part of the column should be protruding from the base. Like this, for example. That? Don't do that. It's bad. These cards will ask you to place two or three columns on the same temple floor. Like here. Or here. You must be able to place all of the columns on the same tile to complete this card. It can be on any floor, but of course, as always, they must match their colored bases. This one will have you move one, two, or three columns from a lower level to a higher level. Columns still have to move to matching bases, but you can carefully grab them from floors that have been built over them, like this. And you can shove them carefully underneath overbuilt floors, like this. Anytime you're placing columns, you can do this too. So just keep that in mind. Now this one is a bit tricky, and that's why it's in the red deck. When you draw this card, you will have to move a built-in temple floor at least one level up or down. This means you'll already have to have some columns ready to receive it. And if there are any columns already on it, you'll just have to very carefully move them along with it, like so. Like I said, this one's tricky, so be careful drawing from the red deck if you're not ready for this to happen. Finally, this card will have you fill an entire floor with columns. You can choose any floor that you like, but you must finish it off by filling the bases with matching columns. Now, whenever a floor is completely filled with columns, which can happen at any time on anyone's turn. This triggers the placement of a new temple floor. Whenever this happens, the player will interrupt their turn, place a new temple floor, and then continue with the rest of their turn as normal. This means it could happen multiple times in one turn. To do this, first grab the top temple floor from the quarry. Then, take a look at the last drawn construction plan card. This symbol means the tile has to be placed light side up. This one means dark side up. And if you see both, that allows you to choose whichever is most convenient for you. When you add the temple floor, you can place it on top of any columns in the temple. It doesn't have to be on top of the tile you just completed. Or, if you wish, you can extend the temple's base instead placing the temple floor on the table, touching the other tiles at two points at least, like this. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, okay, but what happens if I can't complete one of the construction cards? Well, then you get to pass. If you ever can't, or just wish not to complete any construction cards, you can pass your turn, then just place that card right next to these cards. Essentially, this increases the height the tower will need to be by the end of the game to win. 
so just do your best. The game will be over when one of three things happens. If you go to draw columns and there are none left. If you try to draw a card and there are none left. Or if you need to draw a temple floor and, say it with me, there are none left. Once any of these things have happened, the game is over. Count your level cards and check them against the height of the temple. Remember that only temple floors sat on top of columns count. So for example, this tower is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 floors tall. If the temple stands with at least the same number of floors as your level cards, you all win the game together. Otherwise, you all lose together. Now, there is another way the game can end, and that's a collapse. If any temple floor collapses, the game ends immediately. You can still win in this case if the temple is still high enough, and that can happen, but more than likely, you will have lost. And if a couple of columns fall, that doesn't count. You can just pick them up and put them right back where they were. The game only ends if a temple floor collapses and touches the table, or if for some reason you're unable to replace those columns that fell. And that's how you play Minara. Please comment on this video with any questions or feedback, and we will be sure to reply as soon as we're able. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Minara is one of hundreds of games available on greatoakstavern.com slash shop for purchase. Follow the link in the description for more information. Or just stop by when you're in town and try this and over 500 other awesome games like it at Great Oaks Tavern.